today's video I'm going to discuss uh, factoring of receivables or you can also call it discounting of receivables this topic is very relevant to students who are doing CMA part 2 uh, ACCA F9 financial management or if you're studying any financial management or advanced financial management scores in uh, undergraduate graduate or postgraduate level if you're new to this channel, I'm the Commerce Specialist. I create videos covering learning outcomes of various academic qualifications and professional certifications. So let's talk about factoring of receivables. Basically, factoring of receivable relate to the core area of working capital management. Whenever a company is in need of money, especially for working capital, yes, they have many other sources. One of the sources to factor the receivables. Now, what is meant by factoring of receivables? Factoring of receivable means uh, a company may have receivables, means they have sold goods on credit, their customers are supposed to pay them, but not now, let's say after 90 days or 120 days. So obviously customers will not pay before that time, but the company is in need of money now. So what they do is they factor the receivables. There are companies which are known as factoring companies. This could be financial institutions, banks, or individuals. So what a company can do is, if they are in dire need of money now, what they can do is, they can go and sell their receivables to the factoring company. For example, if I'm company A, I am in need of money, my receivables, my customers will pay me after 90 or 120 days, I need money now, what should I do? I will go and sell my receivables to a factoring company. This could be a financial institution, bank, or an individual. Now, what is the arrangement? I sell my receivable to the factoring company, which means I'm giving them the right to collect my receivables on my behalf at a future date, but they will give me some cash in advance now. So what happens is, for example, if my receivables are 1 million, I'm just giving you a small example. We'll go to the calculation as well. So if my receivables are 1 million and I need money now, I can factor my receivables. I will go to a factoring company and tell them, look, these are my receivables. I'm giving you the right to collect it on my behalf. It is 1 million. So you give me, let's say, 950,000 now. And after three months, two months, whatever is the debtors collection period, you can go and collect the money from my customers, full 1 million. So what is in it for the factoring company? They're giving me 950,000 now, but they will be collecting 1 million later. Now, broadly speaking, there are two types of factoring. One is known as with recourse, one is without recourse. When we say with recourse, we are selling the receivables. There is a possibility that the factoring company, when they collect receivables from our customers, there would be some chances of bad debts. Now, who is responsible for bad debts? If factoring is done with recourse, that means the seller, that means me, it's my company, I sold my receivable, I'm responsible for bad debts. But factoring can also be done without recourse, which means I have sold my receivables to you, the risk of bad debts are not yours, I have nothing to do with it. Obviously, factoring without recourse would be a little expensive because they will factor in the risk of bad debts as well in the factoring arrangements. Now, let's look at a practical example. Now, we are considering here that uh, my company has receivables worth 200,000, which I'm selling to the factoring company. Uh, normally, we use the word receivable sold or receivable submitted to the factoring company, 200,000. Now, understand these are the three costs a factoring company generally charges us. The first one is holdback. This holdback is also known as reserve. Now what is why it is done? The factoring company will keep some money back, will hold some money back for potential sales returns. There is a possibility when I sold goods on credit, I may have allow my customers to return within 15 days time. So what if there are some returns? If there are some returns, customers are not gonna pay for that, which means the factor will not collect that money. So the factoring company will hold back a certain percentage of the total receivables for potential sales returns. Factoring company obviously would charge me a factoring fee. What is this factoring fee? This factoring fee is for the service they're giving us. And what is the service? collection of receivables on our behalf. Factoring company may also 
charges interest. And what is this interest? The logic of interest here is, like my company, if I need loan, what I'll do? I'll go to the bank and I borrow. So when I borrow, I have to pay with interest. Likewise, the factoring company is giving me upfront money, which they will be receiving after three months or four months. So interest basically is the reward for waiting for the factoring company. So they may also charge me interest. So these are the three main costs. If a company goes for factoring, they have to bear this. Now what we need to understand is, if this is a situation that I'm submitting receivables or selling receivables worth 200,000, my factor charges me 8% holdback for sales returns, 5% factoring fee and 10% interest. So what is the amount which I'm going to get right now from the factoring company? Obviously later on they will collect 200,000 from my customers, but how much am I getting now? This is what we're going to calculate now. The working looks like this. I start off with receivables sold, which is 200,000, less 8% holdback. This holdback is for possible sales returns, okay? So 8% of this is 16,000. Factor is also charging me 5% factoring fee. That is also on the total receivables. So 5% of this would be 10,000. So 200,000 minus 26. This is 174. Ideally, I should be getting 174,000 from the factor. But the factor will also reduce interest. Why? Because they'll be paying me an amount now for which they will be waiting how many days? My average receivable collection period is 90 days. So factor is giving me X amount of money now for which they will be waiting for 90 days. So they will also reduce interest. Okay, so less interest at the rate of how much is the interest? 10%. So 10% of 174 will give me 17,400, but this interest is for the whole year. We are only talking about 90 days because the factor would have to wait for 90 days to collect the money. So 17,400, you can divide by 360 days in a year and multiply by 90. So we get, divide by 360 into 90, we'll get 4350. So 174,000 minus 4350. This is the amount I'll be getting from the factor right now. Funds received from factor. Now one thing is to be kept in mind that the factor has assumed that there is a possibility of 16,000 of returns. So if the factor collects from my customers 200,000 minus 16, 184,000, then that is okay because he has kept amount for sales return. He has held back that amount. But what if, if he collects more than this amount? more than 184,000. That excess collection, the factor has to return me. Obviously, when we do factoring, there is some documentation. We keep a record of how much the factor has held back for sales returns, all right, and uh, how much was actually collected. Was there any sales return? If there was no sales return, then obviously the amount which he held back for uh, sales return, he has to return it to us, number one. Number two, if there are a higher amount of sales returns, okay, what we were expecting, then obviously we have to return that amount to the factor. Now, the other thing we need to remember is there is an assumption that the factor will collect our receivables in 90 days. And he has charged us interest 
uh, for 90 days, which is 4,350. What if he is able to collect our receivables before 90 days? Let's say 10 days before or 15 days before. So in that case, the factor has to return us 10 or 15 days of interest. Now, whether a company should go for factoring of receivable or not, there are few things to note. Based on that, we will decide should we go for factoring or not. So if you look at this, our cost for factoring, we are assuming that all the receivables were collected. There were no bad debts, there were no sales return, all the receivables are collected. So our cost of factoring actually is the factoring fee which we have paid to the factor and the interest we have paid to the factor. So our total factoring cost is 14,350. Now if our total cost of factoring is 14,350, the company needs to compare it. What if they have their own credit and collection department and had they done the collection themselves, how much it will cost? But here you also need to keep in mind that sometimes a company is in dire need of money and probably their own credit and collection department is not as active as agile as it should be so these are also to be factored in another thing you need to remember is in this situation we are talking about without recourse without recourse means the losses of bad debts belongs to the factoring company what if if it is with recourse that means the risk of bad debts is still with us we are responsible for bad debts in that case the factor would obviously include that in its calculation they will factor in it and Probably our cost factoring cost would be higher than 14,350. There is a possibility that the factoring fee would be high uh, if there is chances of bad debts or there is a possibility that the factor may reduce this amount by uh, some estimated bad debts amount as well. So I hope you guys have uh, understood this topic. If you have any queries relating to this topic, leave a comment below. I will respond to you. If you like this video, please share it with your dear and near ones so that others can also benefit. Thank you so very much for your precious time.